And now we're going to look at some examples for the APA so we get some very clear idea of how this functions. Here is an inline citation and you can see that we have the author here and we have the date. However, the APA guideline is you need to have the date inside the parentheses. Remember it's called parenthetical. We need to have the parentheses. So, Gazaniga 1967 flash pictures to the right or left visual field of each patient whose corpus callosum had been surgically severed. Please remember, space before, space after parentheses, but no space inside the parentheses just before and after. Very easy to get mixed up on that. Let's look at this example here. In one of the earliest studies, Anad China and Sign, 1961, researchers presented a variety of stimuli to a yogi as he meditated. Anad, China, and Sign reported no disruption of the yogi's alpha wave as indicated by EEG recordings by a tuning fork or a hand clap. Oh boy, that is long, right? Two sentences. What's the point here? The point here is we have a reference up here which looks good, I don't see a problem. You can see the ampersand is used there, not A and D. Then we have the same paper being cited again down here. However, do you remember the special rule that applies to this? The first time we list the authors, we list them all, but then the second time we can use at all because there's three or more authors, so we have the at all. We also have the date. Why do we have the date? It's in the same paragraph, it's being repeated. But remember that if the authors were outside the parentheses, and if you're outside, you cannot use ampersand, you must use the A-N-D, then in that case, we would not need the date anymore, would we? Because that's that other special case. Too many special cases, aren't there? But in this situation, we have the multiple authors, three or more, and we use the at all. Personality changes may occur later in life. Newgarten, 73, Newgarten and Hasgard, 76, and Newgarten, 1977. So in this case, we have the same author, but different years. And we also have one author with a different author. And then the question becomes, how do we align these? So in this case, we take Newgarten, since he's the same person, and we combine the dates by splitting them up with a comma. So just use a comma there. And then which one goes first? The smallest date goes first. So 1973 is first, 1977 is second because 1977 is later. The next issue is we have Newgarten and we have Newgarten. So which one goes first? Here we have a semicolon, right? Remember that semicolon between authors, between different authors. So here's Newgarten, here's Newgarten and Asgard. So here we have Newsgarten and that's all. There's nothing more here. So empty, that's empty. That will be earlier than using the H. H becomes later because H goes after empty. That's a general rule of thumb. If something is empty, that's the same as being before A or before zero. The concept of chunking was introduced by Miller, Miller 1956. Clearly you can see there's a problem here, right? And this problem is you don't need to repeat Miller. You just have the year. So in APA we have the author on the outside of the parentheses inside the sentence introduced by Miller and then we have the year by itself, just like that. That's acceptable. Other authors focus on the role of effect. Zonzik, Zo, uh, Zanak, American psychologist, 1984. So here you can see there's a comma, and then we have a journal name. 
However, in APA, very clearly, we don't need a journal name. We just need the author, comma, year. And let's pay attention to that. Before comma, no space. After comma, one space. Then the year of the publication, 1984. That's all you need. Sternberg, 1966, was the first to report the effect of target set size on reaction time. Sternberg, 1966, used target sets of sizes 1, 2, or 4. In this case, we can see that we have the special case of Sternberg, 66, and Sternberg, 66, these are the same paper repeated twice in one paragraph. If you do that in one paragraph and the author is not inside the parentheses, he's outside the parentheses, then you do not need to repeat. So here we have Sternberg 66, and here we just say Sternberg, but we can skip the date because of this special case of we already have the name, we already have the date, and it's parentheses just on the date, on the year. Garcia and Cooling, 1966, demonstrated that rats could learn aversions to specific flavors with minimal training. To do so, Garcia et al. exposed rats to noxious radiation shortly after they drank water with a distinctive flavor. So in this case, we have Garcia and Cooling, 1966. Two authors. One, two. First author, second author. Here we use A and D. Right? Because it's outside the parentheses. We do not use the ampersand. We only use that inside the parentheses. And then we see here the second time we use it, we do not have the date. Why do we not have the date? Because we don't need to have the date inside the same paragraph if the names are outside the parentheses. So that's okay. That's good. And here we use the A-N-D. You do not use at all if it's just two authors. At all is for three or more authors. Here we have three authors, one, two, three. We use A and D, which is good. We do not use ampersand because it's outside the parentheses. Here we have the year inside the parentheses. Very good. Then a little bit later we have two other authors, different paper, and the year here. That's good. Then we repeat con et al. This is the same as the person up here. And we have one, two, three or more authors, so we can use at all is very good, no problem. And guess what? We don't have a date. Where's our date? Which should be 1974. But we don't need a date here because it's the special rule of we're inside the same paragraph and the names were already outside of the parentheses. So we do not need to repeat that date. So this one is correct as is, no change. That was a trick question. Diaz, Guerrero, Rise, Languins, Witz, Holtzman, lots of names here. And then we have a parenthesis, and then we'll repeat the names here. Diaz, Guerrero et al., 1976, investigate the effects of TV on a different culture. And then Diaz, Guerrero, Rise, Witz, Holtzman, use an experimental design. Okay, so what we have here is very clearly easy to see this mistake, right? We don't need to repeat this name. We just need the date. Here are the names of the authors. One, two, three, four authors. We don't need to repeat them. So we just have the year. And then later on, here we have Diaz, Goro, Rise, Langas. We repeat them again when we should be using at all. So to write this correctly, you can see here, very simple. Just the date, and then here are all the names. Good. The last name uses A and D with a comma there. No problem. And then later, when we repeat, we just use the first name with et al. And also, we do not use 1976. No date there because we already have this in the same paragraph.
Best, Williams, Cloud, Davis, Robertson, Edwards, Guile, and Fowles, 1977, found similar gender stereotypes among boys and girls in the United States. Wow, that's a lot of authors, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it looks good so far that we have a comma and and, A-N-D here. That's good. We have the year here. But what's the problem? We are too many. Remember we said that for three or more you can use et al, but the first time you must use the actual number. However, if it's so many here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then we don't do that. I think it was seven, isn't it? Seven or more, we go ahead and use et al the very first time, and that's what we've done here. Even though it's the first time we use et al. Changes in the delusions of Chinese schizophrenic patients have accompanied changes in Chinese society. Yu Fen and Nang, 1981. Hmm, what's wrong here? This looks like it's pretty good. We've got the date, we have the comma, but the problem is this and. We need to be using the ampersand because we're inside the parentheses. One example of computer simulation of human problem-solving performance is the general problem solver, Newell, Shaw, and Simon, 1959, period, Newell and Simon, 1961, semicolon, Newell and Simon. Well, right away you can see there's a problem because here you're using a period and here you're using a semicolon. Remember the correct way to combine different authors, different papers, is to use the semicolon. And remember, if you have the same authors twice, you don't need to write their names, you just write the different dates of the paper, separated by a comma. So again, Newell, Shaw, and Simon, here we use the ampersand. This is their paper, 1959, semicolon. Newell and Simon is a different paper, 1961, and another paper is 1972. We can put them together, separated by a comma. Contemporary Approaches, Roscora, 1966, Common, 1969, focus on the role of informational variables and cognitive processing in classical conditioning. So what's the problem here? This looks pretty good, right? We have a name, comma, a year, semicolon, semicolon separates two different authors. And then we have the author, comma, year. Hmm, that actually looks pretty good, right? But we come into the problem of who goes first and who goes second. Remember that multiple different papers by different authors, we need to use the alphabetical order of the name. K is before R. Postulates 1 and 2, page 44, Hall, 1949, specify the neural effects of ex external stimuli. In this case, we have the author and the year, but the page is in the wrong position. You need to have author, comma, year, comma, page. And please pay attention again, space after the comma, space after the period for P, and here it's T1 page 47. If this was two pages like 47 to 48, then here we would have T, T, like that. Although cats, dogs, and mice do not show the same kind of biased lateral laterality in paw preference as humans do in hardness, songbirds to show a pattern of asymmetry in brain control of song that is similar to the pattern of brain control speech in humans. Springer and Deutsch, 1981, chapter eight. Okay, so here's another example of this. We do have the ampersand, which is good because that's inside the parentheses, 
but if you have pages or chapters, they need to go inside the parentheses also. And APA is very specific about this, which is kind of the trouble with APA. Like I said, the advantage and the disadvantage of APA is that it is really careful about those rules. And in this case, you do not write out chapter C H P A C R. You write out C H A P period with a small C. Inside the rule book on APA, they have a guideline for all abbreviations like this. So that's what they want. And you cannot just make it up a different way.